Hey everybody, it's Craig from Smartphone Emmy. We got a great face off for you today. We've got two smartphones, both running Google's Android 2.3 Gingerbread OS. They are the Samsung Nexus S and the Sony Ericsson Xperia Arc. Don't forget, stop by smartphoneemmy.com, check out the winner of today's face off along with my written review. I'll also have posted some photos and videos taken by today's contestants. If you're watching this on YouTube, simply click on the link in the description, it'll get you over there post haste. All right, let's kick off our face off. Google's Nexus S, quad band GSM, tri band 3G, no 4G connectivity, weighs in at 129 grams. It is the heavier of the two, believe it or not. As far as build quality, you're looking primarily at high grade plastic. It's got a nice glass cover over the display. One thing that's pretty slick about it is contoured, which is very nice. Got a nice high grade plastic rim that encompasses the entire display. Battery cover itself, which covers the bottom sides and back, is made out of a rubberized plastic. As you can see there, it's pretty solid. Underneath the battery cover, you've got a 1500 milliamp battery rated at 6 hours and 40 minutes of talk time on 3G. Your SIM card slot, there is no micro SD card support on the Nexus S. Get the battery cover back on here. There we go. Upper right phone speaker, just to the left of that is the LED flash and camera. Up on top, nothing. On the right hand side is the power and lock key. On the bottom is the 3.5mm headphone jack along with the microphone and micro USB port. And on the left hand side is the volume rocker. All right, Sony Ericsson Xperia Arc quad band GSM dual band 3G. Again, no 4G connectivity. Is the lighter of the two weighing in at 117 grams, so it's quite light. Build quality, you've got nice glass over the display, which is scratch resistant. You've got some chrome accents on the three physical keys below the display. You've got chrome accents on each side, top and bottom as well. Battery cover is made out of, again, a rubberized plastic. So neither of these phones are going to win any awards for build quality. As far as the battery, again, it's a 1500 milliamp battery, but it's rated, rated a little bit higher. It's seven hours of talk time on 3G, so about 20 minutes more of talk time. SIM card slot, micro SD card slot, handles up to a 32 gigabyte micro SD card. You do have to remove the battery, so you can't hot swap the micro SD cards on the Xperia Arc. All right, down here at the bottom, on the back is your speaker. Above that to the left is the LED flash and camera. Up on top is the power lock key, which is a little recessed for my taste. You can start the phone though using the home key, which is convenient. HDMI port with its cover. Micro SD port. Volume rocker up and down. Dedicated camera key. Microphone, lanyard loopholes. And on the left hand side is the 3.5mm headphone jack. All right, as far as cameras, the Xperia Arcus are definite winner. On the Nexus S, you've got a 5 megapixel camera with autofocus, LED flash, and geotagging. Video capture is WVGA at 30 frames per second. On the Arc, you've got an 8 megapixel camera with autofocus, LED flash, touch focus, image stabilization, geotagging, and face and smile detection. Video capture is 720p HD at 30 frames per second. All right, let's take a look at the displays on both. Get them both fired up here. And I'm centered for you again. Got a couple real nice displays. You've got a nice 4 inch Super AMOLED capacitive touch display showing 40 by 100 pixels on the Nexus S. Uh, again, it's contoured as I showed you before. It has a special coating to protect from fingerprints. Also has an accelerometer sensor, proximity sensor, offers multi touch, also has a three axis gyro sensor. On the Xperia Arc, you've got a 4.2 inch Super LCD showing 480 by 854 pixels, so it offers a few more pixels. Has an accelerometer sensor proximity sensor as well as multi touch. The Nexus S offers a front facing camera for video calls in the upper right hand corner. The Xperia Arc does not. The Nexus S has four touch sensitive keys just below the display back key, main menu key, search key, and home key. The Arc has three physical keys just below the display, a back key, home key, as well as a main menu key. All right, as far as memory, the Nexus S offers 16 gigabytes of internal storage, which cannot be expanded upon, along with 512 megabytes of RAM. The Xperia Arc has 320 megabytes of internal storage, 512 megabytes of RAM, but you can add an additional 32 gigabytes of internal storage through the use of a micro SD card. Both of them offer Wi-Fi 802.11 BGNN with support for DLNA. Again, the Xperia Arc also offers HDMI out. Both of them offer Bluetooth version 2.1 with support for A2DP. Both of them offer GPS with support for AGPS. Both of them can be used as Wi-Fi hotspots. The processor on the 
Google Nexus S, excuse me, Samsung Nexus S is the ARM Cortex A8 1 gigahertz Hummingbird processor. On the Xperia Arc, it's Qualcomm's MSM8255 1 gigahertz Snapdragon processor. And again, the operating system on both is Android 2.3 Gingerbread. As you can see, I've downloaded the Quadro Standard Benchmark test on our two contestants. What do you say we kick them off and see what we get? Looks like we got a good clean start. And they're off. Both smartphones offer 1 gigahertz processors. Again, the Nexus S has Samsung's 1 gigahertz Hummingbird processor. And the Arc runs Qualcomm's MSM8255 1 gigahertz Snapdragon processor. And they both have 512 megabytes of RAM. And the Arc has definitely gotten into the graphics, already into 3D graphics. And here comes the Nexus S. into the 3D graphics and again you can see frame rates and frames per second in the lower left hand corner of the display on both alright and what do we get can't read that at that angle we've got 1583 it looks like to me on the Xperia Arc and we're still waiting on the Nexus S came back at 1583 so for the first time ever we've got a tie on the Quadrant Standard Benchmark test I see if either one of these smartphones can find the corner bakery for us and again there is no dedicated search key on the Xperia Arc so I'll use the search bar from the uh, from Google on both of these navigate to corner bakery Pretty even start looks like to me. Wow. Head southwest on Lensburg Circle. Head southeast on Cuffey Way toward La Venture Road. Then turn left onto La Venture Road. Well, they both have the correct directions, but they started out a little bit differently, which was interesting. The uh, Nexus S was up just a hair quicker with the uh, voice guided turn by turn navigation as opposed to the ARC. Let's put these on mute at the moment because they'll continue to navigate and tell us what to do. Just take a look at the displays and how they redraw, how smooth they are. Pretty smooth. Double tap to zoom in a little bit. Herky jerky. Not too bad though. Get to redraw. Not too bad. Double tap to zoom in. Pinch to zoom. Zoom out. There we go. The Xperia Arc feels maybe just a hair smoother, but it was, I don't know, it was a little bit herky-jerky there at the end. So they, they both seem very comparable. Again, they're both running 1 gigahertz processors. They both have the same amount of RAM. And as we saw in our benchmark test, they came back tied. So uh, from a navigation standpoint, the uh, Nexus S came up with the voice guided turn-by-turn -turn direction. It's a little bit quicker, but uh, as far as scrolling through maps and looking at them, um, they feel pretty much the same. All right, what do you say we do our YouTube comparison? And I've got the volume turned up on the Nexus S. Got to turn down on the Arc for our first example. And we'll start here. And they're both running off the same Wi-Fi network. Both set to default to HQ. All right, there's number one. Let me turn the volume up now on the Xperia Arc, and we'll turn it down on the Nexus S. Get these lined back up. And pick another video. And again, they're both running off the same Wi-Fi network, and they both have, uh, what was the other thing I wanted to say? Oh, they're both uh, displaying HQ. We're off.
All right, so there's a look at a couple of YouTube videos. The uh, ARC definitely loaded the uh, both videos quicker. Uh, you got a chance to hear the sound, the playback on the uh, Xperia, the Nexus S first, the Xperia second. And they're both on running on the same Wi-Fi network, and they both have uh, default to HQ. All righty, I think it's time we ran our unofficial speed test, especially since we had a dead heat in the Quadrant Standard Benchmark test. Got the same uh, task killer on both, just killed all the background tasks. So let's start out with uh, the calendar on both. Where is the calendar? There we go. Try and kick them off at the same time. That looked to be the Nexus S. Let's go to Gmail. There's Gmail on one. There it is on the other. That looked like a tie to me. Pretty hard to tell. Let's try messaging on both. Should we go? That definitely looked to be the Nexus S. Um, let's try maps on both. That looked like the Nexus S, although I couldn't tell complete finish. Let's go to contacts on both. We have contacts on one, contacts on the other. Again, that appeared to be the Nexus S or a tie, one of the two. Let's go into settings on both. That appeared to be the Nexus S. Let's try the market on both. There's a market. There's the market. Oh, that was close. Maybe the Nexus S, but by a hair if it was. And then let's go to movies on both. And that was the Xperia Arc. And then let's load it and see who plays it quicker. That looked like a tie as far as loading up the video and starting to play it. Overall, I think the Nexus S won more than it lost against the Xperia Arc, which I'm a little surprised to say, but did seem a little bit quicker in loading uh, everyday applications than the Xperia Arc.